Welcome to chapter 9, Systems of Linear Equations. So, first one is utilizing the graphing method. Uh, our objective is to use graphs to solve systems of linear equations. So, what is systems of linear equations? Well, it's when you have two variables and you use two different unique equations in order to solve it and either through graphing each of those equations on an x and a y coordinate or we can also do um, substitution, we can do addition subtraction, we can do multiplication but some of the vocabulary terms are systems of equations, two or more equations in the, with the same variable. They love that term in. Uh, also called systems of simultaneous equations. To solve a system, you find all ordered pairs of x and y for each of the equation, and then you find where they intersect or where they're both true, since all the points are all of, since points are all solutions, or what we call true um, true values, where they both are true would be an intersection or they would share that solution so it would be a solution to the system. Solution of a system of equations in ordered pair that satisfies both equations at the same time. Coincide. Two lines coincide if their graphs are the same. The equations are equivalent because they're the same equation. And then you also have parallel. So lines or two equations can do one of three things. So they can either, let's get our pen working, they can intersect at one point, they can be parallel where they don't intersect at any point, or they can be the same line where they intersect at all points on the line. So those are the three situations that you'll have. Each line represents an equation, a linear equation. Uh, you can also have nonlinear equations where now they intersect in two places. Or you can have cubics where they'll intersect at three places or whatever. So there's lots of different systems. And you can also have three lines, one, two, and three. And so uh, there's lots of different situations. Um, here in 9.1 we are going to utilize graphing. This is in standard form. I would find the x and y intercept um, <clears throat> and I would graph and then we'd find where it intersects. So um, very important for us to understand the difference between, let's do this in green. So this has a y-intercept of negative 1, so that's that point, and it has an x-intercept of 1 half, that would be that point. So this green equation, and these are all the solutions to the green equation. The blue equation has an x-intercept of 5, x-intercept of 5, and a y-intercept of 5, and these are all the solutions to the blue equation. Important for us to understand is, let's take this point right here, we'll grab it. So this point right here is false for green and false for blue. This point is false, 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 false. It's false because it doesn't lie on either of the equations. So if we plug this into this green equation, we would get a false statement we get 2 equals 1 or something like that. If we plugged it into the blue equation, we again would get a false statement, 7 equals 5. So if I move it onto the green equation, now it is true for the green. We plug it in, we would get 1 equals 1, but false for the blue. If we take this and move it onto the blue equation, it's going to be false for the green, but true for the blue. And then if we move this point right here on 2, 3 and plug it in, we're going to find that it's true for the green and true for the blue. So we're looking for what I call the true, true. So it is true for both equations because it intersects and it is on both of the lines, both of the linear equations. This would be the solution to the system. So graphing is fun and graphing is good, but notice that intersection happened at a grid line, 
2 on the x, 3 on the y. So we were able to see what that solution is. That's not always going to be the case. So it will be important for us to learn other methods outside of graphing. So what are we going to do? We're going to graph these. I'm going to pick colors. We're going to make this one green. So I'm going to use the standard form. The fact that this is in standard form, we can cover up, cover up the y. And we see that x equals 6. So x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if we cover up the x and we get y equals 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now we can connect the dots. And this is the solution, all the solutions, to that green equation. And I'm trying to move it on there. And I'm trying to, perfect. Um, let's make it green. Let's give it arrows. And we are good. So those are all the solutions to the green. Let's do the blue. My x-intercept is 2. My y-intercept is going to be negative 2 if we cover up. And then we have to isolate for y. We get negative y equals 2. But we haven't isolated, so we have to divide by negative 1. And we get y equals negative 2. So we're going to make a dot at negative 2. We are going to connect the dots here on those intercepts. And that's going to take me something like that. We're going to make that blue with arrows. And now we want to see where does it intersect? It looks like it intersects at, let's do, it looks like it intersects right there. And that coordinate is 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. And then does it say solve? Okay, so it doesn't say check, but if we took that and plugged it in to x plus y equals 6, we plug in our x, which is 4 plus 2, we get 6 equals 6. So yes, that worked out. And then if we do x minus y equals 2, my x is 4 minus y, and we get 2 equals 2, and yes, that works. So that is the solution to the system. So now we'll speed it up a little bit, and we will do um, this in green. So my x-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Connect the dots. That's not bad. We will do this in blue. My x-intercept is negative 3. My y-intercept is positive 3. Let's connect those two points. That's not great. So we get an intersecting intersection. Looks like it is right there, which is 1, um, one 2, 3, 4, 1, 4 would be our solution to the system. So graphing's nice and efficient and good, and we should put arrows if we want, but that's gonna be the solution to that one. Um, we continue, this is nice. It's great when we know how to graph standard form and how easy it can be. Boom, boom, let's make a line. And that's good. It looks relatively tight to those points. Let's do the other one. X is 3. Y-intercept is negative 3. Connect them. So we're getting some good intersections. So it looks like That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for x, 1, 2, 3 for y. That's not the best 6, 3. Sorry. So 6, 3 looks like it's a solution to. Uh, now we're in slope-intercept form, so doesn't mean that I can't do it. I just 
need to pull different pieces of information. We're going to graph the y-intercept, which is 2, and then the slope, which is up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. We can still make that line. Let's uh, graph the other line. Negative 1 y-intercept and a slope of 2, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. So we had to extend it a, a couple of of iterations with the slope to get there, but we got there. So it looks like it intersects at the point. Uh, what's that? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Three, five. And if I was really good, I would plug in those points and test them. Now we're back to standard form. So standard. <clears throat> Let's do that one in that color. Uh, X-intercept is zero, and Y-intercept is also zero, so I can't. Uh, so I'm not able to find another point using the intercept, so I would either need to plug in or I would need to manipulate that equation. So I'm going to manipulate the equation. I'm going to add Y, add Y and I get 2x equals y, so it has a slope of 2, so I can go up 2, right 1, and get my next point up 2, right 1, so now I'm able to graph it. So, didn't really throw me too much for a loop, but we're back here, we have an x-intercept of 3 and a y-intercept of 3, and we're going to draw those, connect those dots. So we see that that intersecting intersection looks like it is right here and that point is one two okay um and this is we start seeing the downfall so uh x intercept is one half y intercept is one okay well that's a very tight window to be graphing that kind of looks like that. We can move it around a little bit and I can assume well, yeah, that's kind of where it looks. So yeah, that's good. All right, we'll see. We'll see. This one we may need to check. So three and three. Oh, I know what you're doing. I don't know. So three and three. Kind of look like they're parallel. But, yeah. But no. No, it's just uh, x and y are 3, y is 1, oh, yeah, y is 1, x is 1 half. Yeah, that's tough. Where is that going to intersect? Goodness. So, I mean, can we see where that's going to intersect? Does it, yeah, I guess it's going to intersect right off that grid. Woo. Is that right there? I mean, is that the solution, huh? So I would assume it might, whoops, sorry. Um, I think that might intersect right here, which is negative, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, negative seven, ten. So let's test it. Let's see if that works. So 2 times negative 7 plus 10 equals 1. That's negative 14 plus 10 equals 1. That's negative 4 does not. So that is not the solution. This is good for our, <clears throat> for our work and just figuring things out. So y is 1, x is 1 half. 
So that clearly, sorry, pointer. So that clearly isn't where it intersects. Um, three, three. So, you know, it looks like it goes that way. Um, could it be, maybe it's, maybe it's right here. Maybe the point is right here. That point is, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six, nine, wouldn't be. Well, no, that's not going to be it either. That's not the solution. So we see the downfalls. Now we're starting to see the downfalls of graphing. Here's the other thing that we can do. We can use Desmos. So let's use technology for a second. And let's type in those two equations. My two equations are 2x plus y equals 1, 2x plus y equals 1. That's that one that we looked at. Yep. And then the other one is x plus y equals 3. x plus y equals 3. Hmm. Wow, that intersects a whole lot different than where I'm doing it. That's interesting. So the point of intersection looks like it's negative 2, 5. So why am I not coming up with negative 2, 5? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Is it because this just isn't steep enough? This is this even a solution? That should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that gives us positive three. So that line's correct. This is probably the line that is, and because it's such a, a small increment, right? So that's where we sort of lose out that that it's not as steep and accurate as we'd like it to be. So herein lies some of the difficulties of now we're moved down here, but that is definitely not, what did we say the solution is? The solution is uh, negative two, five. Wow. So let's take that and let's paste it in there because this is a learning lesson. Let's go this, let's make it smaller. So this is what we have to be careful about is graphing can be <clears throat> a little bit off, especially in this, this small severity of getting that steep through this where we think is a half and we think is one. So be careful that the solution is actually, uh, and, and we'll just write, uh, we thought it might be negative 7, 10, and it's not. So the solution is really negative 2, 5. So we'll see how it goes. Here we're going to change this. Let's change this to y equals negative 2x plus 5. That gives us uh, a much easier <clears throat> way of graphing. So we'll take that one. We have a y-intercept of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A slope of down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. We can connect that dot. That's not too bad. Let's go right through there and let's graph this other equation has a y x intercept of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and a y intercept of 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. Let's connect those dots. It's not too shabby. We probably think that it is right there, and the point is 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Seems like a reasonable 3. Minus negative 1 is 4, 6 minus 1 is 5. Yep, so that worked. That one did work. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. So we can still mental math. 
should be able to do mental math. The x-intercept is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My y-intercept, cover up the x, we're going to divide by 2 is 2.5 two on the y. 1, 2, and a half. So let's get that looking. Sorry. So that line looks right about there. Let's graph the bottom one. It gives me an x-intercept of negative 1 and a y-intercept of positive 1. We'll connect those. And yep, that looks like that point right there. And that is going to give me uh, 1, 2. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 times 2 times 2 is 5. We are in standard form, and it works. That's not a bad one. x, 1, 2, 3, 4. y is negative 4. Connect them. 1, 2, 1, 2 3, 4. Whoops. That's good. Close, but not on it. On it. That's good. Let's do the other equation, x-intercept of 1, y-intercept of 2, y-intercept of 2 is there, line, going through it. That looks, that looks okay. <clears throat> oh. That kind of looks like it's, no, I didn't. That looks like it's sort of off. Are we going to get a, or are we going to be able to drag that into a solution? You think it's that one? Yeah, that could be it. If we were going to find a point. So we can try. Let's try. Let's test that point, which is 2, negative 2. Does... 2, negative 2 work. That works there. 2 minus negative 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 2 is 2. So, yes, it did. Yes. So that was a situation where we had to check it out and try. So it worked. <clears throat> um, ooh, look at those. Those are fun ones. So let's do this one. My y-intercept is negative 1. That's an easy one. My x-intercept is 1 half. That's not a fun one. So we will draw that. That was the last time we got in trouble was that half. And, oh, yikes. My y-intercept is 7. I can do that. That's relatively easy. But my x-intercept is 3 and a half. 1, 2, 3 and a half. Connect those two. Let's, no, oh, that's not too bad. All right, that's, actually, that worked out. I think we can see that one. I think that's the point. That's the coordinate. That is two, one, two, three, two, three. Uh, four plus three is seven, and negative four plus three is negative one. So that worked. So now we're checking just because let's put some time and effort. Here's the other thing is we could change these real quick. Y equals 2X minus 5. Y equals X minus 3. So that's the other thing is if you see something simple, if you can change it relatively simple, let's change it. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Slope of 2 up to right 1, up to right 1. Don't make it any harder than it needs to be. Uh, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. We have a slope of 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. So we share that intersecting point. We know that that's where it shares. So 
we can just go right to it. Right there, which is 2, negative 1. So <clears throat> notice we start with the y. That's negative 1 minus 2 times 2. So we have negative 1 minus 4, which is negative 5. We have negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. That is the solution. I'm probably going to use standard form here. So standard form, x-intercept is going to be negative 2. Y-intercept is going to be positive 1. We got two points. We can graph it. Change the color. X-intercept is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Y-intercept is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Connect them. And we would assume that it's going to be... No, I keep doing that. That's why it keeps getting fat on me. So that point is going to be, that coordinate is 2, 2. 2, 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Boom. All right. Solve the system by graphing. When you graph the equations in the same coordinate plane, you see that the lines have the same slope. So if we... Uh, if we want to plot this, we, we can use the intercepts, and we'd notice that they are not going to intercept. So if we solve them, if we isolate, we have negative 2 y. I don't want big, thick. So we get negative 2y equals negative x plus 4. We divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. We get the equation y equals 1 half x minus 2 for this equation. And we do the same thing over here. We'll use this x uh, negative 2y equals negative x minus 2 divide by negative 2 divide by negative 2 divide by negative 2. y equals 1 half x plus 1. Parallel lines have the same slope, same slope different y-intercepts. Here, we end up with the same slope and the same y-intercept, so it ends up being the same line. So this system has no solution. This one, I don't like that. I don't like that answer. Mr. Mack always says, infinite many solutions. No, I don't do that. I say um, all points <coughs> on the line. Why do I say that? Because all of these solutions back here were a specific location. These are all location-based. We want to know where the solution is. Where, what value do they both show? So when we get to this, here, none of them, they, they intersect nowhere, so we get the answer, no solution. Infinitely many points just tells you how many solutions. I didn't say, oh, I have one solution. That's not my answer. One solution. No, we don't give that as an answer. We give a specific location. I don't care how many solutions, because at another point, it's going to be two solutions or three solutions. So in this, I'd much rather say all points on the line. Where We can't list every single point, but we can at least give a more accurate location. That's where they intersect. All the points on the line is where they intersect, because that's what we want to know. What solutions do they share? All of the points that are on the line. So that's Mr. Max's little sort of um, diatribe. But yes, you're going to see infinitely many solutions. So if we solve this, this ends up being y equals 3x minus 8. This equation ends up being y equals negative x plus 4. Those do not have the same slope, so we would understand that this will intersect somewhere. So let's graph both of these. We'll graph this equation, negative 8 on the y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. We got a couple points. Let's connect them up a little bit, make that a little bit better. Good. Let's graph 
these points, one, two, three, four, slope of negative one, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. So I can keep extending that slope in order to find the point of intersection. That's always a good thing. So we have that, and that is going to be 3, 1. 3, 1, that's 9. <clears throat> Minus 1 is 8. That is 3 plus 1 is 4. So that worked. Um, this is y equals x. This has a slope of 1. This is not going to have a slope of 1, so we can solve that. That's going to be uh, 3y, so that's going to be y equals negative 2 thirds x, oh yikes, uh, plus 5 thirds. That's not a fun one to graph. Okay, we'll graph it 5 thirds, so that's going to be a little bit under, oh no, that's x, uh, yeah, y intercept. Slope is down to 1, 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3, gets us there. Down 2, 1, 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3. So that looks like that. Let's graph that. That's not a great... It wasn't very... 5 thirds is there. Um, yeah, this is going to be hard. Let's see what that looks like. Um, do that. Let's do our y equals x. That has an x-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. So that actually worked out for us. We got really lucky. Solution is probably 1, 1. 1, 1. Let's check it out. 2 plus 3 is 5. 1 equals 1. That was good. So we got very, very lucky. These are going to have the same slope. No, they aren't. Minus 2x, we would have to isolate this. So that equation is going to simplify if we isolate for y. y equals um, 2 thirds x, um, and that's going to be minus 4 thirds. I think that's correct. This is going to be uh, y equals 2x, negative 2x. And we can do mental math. That's not a bad thing. We should be able to look at this. And 4 thirds, negative 4 thirds is right there. We have a slope of 2 up to 4 thirds. So that's 1, 2, right, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Looks like that. Let's... Even it up, clean it up a little bit. That looks pretty good. We're going to do this. This has a y-intercept of 0, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. What is that going to look like? Oof. Well, let's even it up a little bit. Let's put it through 0. Hmm. So, I mean, that's the closest one, I guess. I mean, is, oh no, shoot. Too happy with the pen. Uh, is that one negative one? Are we going to get one negative one? So one negative one does not work. One negative one does not work. So th that is not the solution. Let's make sure we're doing it correctly. So negative four thirds, that's one and one third. We have a slope of two, up one, two, right, three, one, two, three. Looks about right. That's good, up one, two, one, two, three. So it's on the bottom side. Maybe that could be a little bit lower. Right, because Maybe down there. Yeah, I can't believe negative 1 does. And this is 0. That's definitely off. And 2, that's definitely off. So, hmm. I'm trying to see where that might intersect. 
still looks like one negative one. I mean, are we talking fractions? Maybe we're talking fractions. Let's go to Desmos. Let's utilize Desmos. We like, well, I guess, yeah, that is kind of cheating. 2x minus 3y, 2x minus 3y equals 4. And 2x minus y minus y equals 0. What? Oh, I definitely made a mistake then. Are they both minus? Yes, they are. So I clearly graphed that. So minus and minus is positive. That should be okay. And then uh, there's where I made my mistake. Silly. It's not negative. It's positive 2y. So positive 2x. So we actually have a positive slope. Sorry. Did you see that? Did you notice that one? That was a bad one. Zero. We're going to flip it. Oh, yes. I can already see where the intersecting points are. So, of course, the solution, of course, the solution is going to be negative one, negative two, negative one, negative two. So that's negative two, positive six, which makes positive four. Negative two plus two is zero. My bad. Didn't need, well, yes, we didn't need Desmos to find out our mistake. That's okay. These are going to be parallel. So this becomes y equals um, oh no, that's negative x plus 3, and this is, oh yeah, y equals negative x plus 3, so they're going to be the same lines, so when we graph this, y-intercept is 3, slope is down 1, right 1, connect it, we get the same exact Slope and the same, so the answer is uh, infinite. No, sorry. Infinite many points is what the book is going to say. Mr. Mac says all points on the line. I like that. Because that's where it is. And if we graph the other one, if we graph this in green, that in blue, green has the same exact one. Um, this is going to have, um, let's isolate, let's solve for y, solve for y, and we get. Um, y equals uh, negative one half x minus two. Here we get y equals negative one half x plus four. So same slopes, different x intercept or different y intercepts. So this is going to be no solution. And we can graph those real quick. We'll do this, negative 2, slope of down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2. And this one, we have a 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2. And they will be parallel to each other. They will never intersect, so they will never share a point. So we know that they are parallel and have no solution. Um, let's do this. This is y equals negative 3x plus 6. This is um, y equals 
2x plus 1. They will intersect. How do I know they'll intersect? Because they have uh, different slopes. So since they have different slopes, they will intersect. And let's graph them. 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 3, right 1, down 3, right 1. That was a really bad line. That was one of my worst ones. Let's graph the other line. Y-intercept of 1, slope of 2, up 2, up 2, right 1 is going to share that point. And that's where using slope intercept helps because you're going to find maybe by extrapolating out the slope, you get uh, to see where that intersection is going to be. So 3 plus 3 is 6, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. I guess I should have been, should have been uh, checking all along. So we get y equals x plus 6. We get y equals uh, x minus 2. Same slope, different y-intercepts. So those are going to be parallel, so it'll be no solution. We will graph it just to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Slope of 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. Other line. Y-intercept of negative 2, up 1, right 1, up 1, 2, right 1. Parallel lines will not intersect. Um, let's go back to rewriting y equals x minus 3. Rewrite y equals 2x minus 5. They will intersect. Negative 3, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. And that's how fast. If you get to, if you know how to graph, if you can graph and be able to be familiar with the linear equations, then you're going to get the solution to this real fast. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Slope up 2, right 1. Up 2, right 1. We see the intersection. There, that's good. And the intersecting point is going to be 2, negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Negative 1 minus negative, no, minus 2, negative 2 times 2, which is negative 5. That worked. Uh, we can make this y equals negative 2x plus 5. This line becomes y equals negative 2x minus 1. Same slope, different y-intercept. They are parallel. No solution. Let's graph them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Slope of down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. Uh, slope. Uh, Y-intercept is negative 1, down 2, right 1. Or up 2, left 1. Up 2, left 1. You notice that we never intersect. And that's just because the lines are drawn poorly, but we're good. Um, let's write this. This is y equals 2x minus 7. This is going to be ooh, y equals um, negative 1 half x plus 11 halves, right? Minus x divided by 2. Yep. So these are actually going to be perpendicular. Uh, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So that's also an important thing that you'll learn a little bit down the line. Negative 7 is here. And up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. Oh, that's nice. That was a good one. And then this is, yikes, that is 6, 5.5. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five and a half is there. Slope of down one, right two, down one, 
right two, down one, right two. So that will intersect right there. Oh, that was not bad at all. And that looks like it's right here. So that is one, two, three, four, five, three. Somebody's calling me. Uh-oh. Um, yes, I will take your call. Hello. Okay, I'll be down in Momos. I have uh, maybe one or two more problems. All right, bye. Yep. You get it all <laughs> with Mr. Max videos. Uh, five, three, five, ten, minus three is seven. Five plus six is 11. How many more do I have? How many more? Two more. All right. Then dinner. Uh, here, this is y equals negative 4x minus 14. This is y equals 3x. Since they have different slopes, we know they're going to intersect. So negative 14 is going to be way down here. Up four takes you to 10 over one. Up four, one, two, three, four over one. Nope, wrong way. Slope is down. Sorry, and left. I made a boo boo. That's going in that direction. This is going to be way down here. This is way down here at 14. This is over here, up four more. One, two, three, four. So we can, that's actually not bad. That worked out okay. We can connect those. Hey, that's pretty good connecting too. And then we have uh, zero and then up three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right one, or down one, two, three, left one, one, two, three, left one. So we see that intersecting point right there. That was nice. Y-intercept of zero. So we get the point of intersection that is right there. That's negative two, negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's check it out. Four times negative two is negative eight. Minus six is negative 14. Three times negative two is negative six. That worked. Let's pen. We're still on pen. This is going to give me y equals x minus 4. This is going to give me y equals um, x minus 4. So no solution because they are parallel lines. Oh, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. They're the same lines. Not no solution. It's infinite many points infinite many points, a.k.a. Uh, all points on the line. You'll never see this in any assessment or any online standardized test, but this is what you'll see. This is, um, let's graph it just to finish up. Whoop. One, two, three, four, up one, right one, up one, right one. And we get the same points. There you go. All right. So good luck. Um, this is systems, systems through graphing, which is great as long as your intersecting point is, let's use this example, as long as your intersection is on a grid line. And if it's not, then we're in trouble and then we have to approximate. So graphing is not going to be the number one choice, but uh, you can, but it's not the best one. It's not the most accurate.